want to give this subject justice. And there's a video on my uh, blog by Dr. Philip Zimbardo. He is a social psychologist. And he talks about the, I think every Christian should review his material. He's written a book called The Lucifer Effect, Why, Why Good People Do Bad Things. And um, basically the system that's set up and the system within that people function within basically predisposes them to be evil. And I believe complementarianism does that very well, unfortunately. <laughs> But he talks about social proof and pressure, and these are very potent and powerful things for anyone, even a Christian. Cialdini is a director of marketing, I believe, who's written an excellent book that most salesmen should read. I think every consumer should read this. Get anything done. If I'm in need of a policeman, and I walk outside here and I see a policeman in a police uniform standing by a police car. And I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to assume he's a policeman because of his uniform and of his appearance. But if he's not, there is a possibility that he might not be a policeman. And I'm taking a risk. So whenever you rely upon these rules of thumb or shortcuts, we're taking a risk at deception. The first weapon of influence that Cialdini describes is commitment and consistency. Now, con commitment, I'd like to use a good object lesson for that. There was a conference called the True Woman Conference in October of 2008. Um, very complimentarian. Uh, John Piper spoke there, Nancy Lee DeMoss. Um, and prior to the conference, no one was given any information about a document called the True Woman Manifesto. True Woman Manifesto. And at the end of the conference, people were supposed to go up and sign it. They didn't have time to review it. How much reading do you get to do at a ladies' conference, ladies, when you go and you drive and you get there and you're tired and you sit up with your girlfriends all night in a hotel room talking, talking, talking. You go, you have these ecstatic experiences with all the lights and all the awe and excitement and you get your true woman hanky to wave around and um, very exciting stuff. Well, do you have time to sit and scrutinize a, doctor, uh, a document you're supposed to sign that has doc doctrinal information in it? If you sign it, you've made a commitment that has a lot of influence over people. It's tremendous. When you give your phone number to the uh, car salesman, in a way you've made a commitment. And it's a powerful thing for every human being. Consistency, we've talked again a little bit about. We tend to behave in certain ways. Now, people, human beings like other people to think about them the way they think about themselves. So if uh, I go up to you, sir, sir, you are a lesbian. Now what, what which is ridiculous because this is a man sitting here, Doug Phillips. And uh, your response is going to be, I'm not a, uh, what, are you crazy? You want to rush to your own defense. It's, it's a natural impulse. It, I mean, you can almost barely control trying to tell somebody, well, you're wrong. You're wrong about that. Salesmen use this all the time. You know, other people who don't care for their customers, they'll just buy any old thing. But people that really respect and love their customers, they only settle for my product. What's going on? There's a click and a whir, as Cialdini says in his book. Somebody presses a button, and you feel an overwhelming urge to demonstrate to him that you really care about your customers and he's led you down the primrose path and the best way to demonstrate that you have uh, consistency as a person you're going to prove to him that you care about your customers by buying his product uh-uh uh-uh it's a it's a manipulation tactic uh, authority the abuse of authority the appeal to authority is an informal logical fallacy. It is a very powerful thing. When you hear that uh, Christianity today calls a certain individual uh, the, most, the foremost expert alive on biblical exegesis and uh, 
you hear that this man embraces complementarianism, what are you going to do? Well, who am I? I'm just Joe Christian here, or Jane Christian, as the case may be. And uh, who am I to question what this, you know, esteemed Bible teacher knows? Well, I'll tell you who you are. You're a blood-bought child of the Lamb, and you're a Berean, and you've studied the Word of God. And the Word of God is effective and powerful, and it is not dependent upon the source. Truth is truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. And they use, but they use um, authority. Now, social proof I've already mentioned. If you're in a room um, here, uh, it wouldn't be socially acceptable for you to get up and cough and dance around. Um, if you're in a seminary with 5,000 other students and Mr. Uh, biblical authority gets up and says, I believe in something crazy, for you to raise your hand and say, excuse me, sir, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, it's very difficult to do in a social setting. Um, if we're all hungry and somebody brought in luscious food and set up here, and you know you wanted to go up and eat, but nobody else would, you know, you kind of look around and think, what do they know that I don't know? These are very powerful unwritten rules that are, that are built into us. And that's really a survival thing. If the food is poisoned, you know, that's helped you survive. But it can be used to manipulate us. Now, uh, I just want to mention briefly his other weapons of influence. Reciprocity, liking, and scarcity. Reciprocity is, well, if a Kirby salesman comes to your home and gives you a feather duster for listening to his presentation, he's not thanking you. He's, he's trying to get you to reciprocate. It is another basic human tendency. We like to return in kind the things that are given to us. He's manipulating you to buy his vacuum cleaner. Liking, we tend to comply with people we like. And um, scarcity, you know, available for a limited time only. That, that too can be something that appeals to our wisdom. You know, you don't, if something's on sale, you know you're going to use it, you buy it to be a good steward of your money. But for a limited time only is a very, very potent and powerful influence. I'm just going to give you another perspective to describe the manipulation used in churches. Robert Lifton um, was the psychiatrist who counseled and worked with the Korean prisoners of war who came out of the Korean War. And he identified um, eight techniques that are used by manipulative groups that want to use ideology to influence you. How do you get by somebody's critical thinking? How do you engage them? You take the good and the bad about them and you use everything against them. You have, it's a fully orbed process that gets at your emotion, your thoughts, your behaviors, and you're bombarded with false information and propaganda. So um, we're going to go through those. This is disturbing. But this is what's going on in churches. Technique of confession. This was used in the True Woman Conference. At the end of the proceedings on the first day, I watched it on live feed on the internet. They had open mics available for people to come up and say, I just had this glorious experience. I repented of feminism and you know, all these things. I, I've repented of complementarianism. But um, <laughs> I never believed half this stuff anyway. But um, what this is doing, I can tell you, if you go to a hypnotist, a hypnotherapist and you're trying to say you're trying to not smoke anymore they put you in a trance and they bring you out and then they ask you how was that for you tell me about it this is as important as the hypnosis itself because you're appealing to that person's sense of commitment you're appealing to their consistency you're asking them to rehearse it and let me tell you what happens you go right into an alpha state of awareness your brain waves slow down when you talk about yourself you go into an alpha state that's where your brain has to go 
to talk about those things. That's how the brain works. And I can tell you this too, if you're in a church and you have to look up 30 degrees above midline and raise your eyes to look at somebody, you're watching a human pendulum because it is a physiologic thing. When you lift your eyes and hold them up there for any length of time, you shift into an alpha state of awareness, the primary state of hypnosis. Now this is a good thing if we're praying. I always look up when I pray, always. It's just automatic because in a prayerful state, you want to be in a state of um, relaxed awareness and alert awareness. But if you're trying to scrutinize somebody's teachings, you want to be you want to be there with your pen and your Bible in hand, looking at what they're saying. So, isn't that lovely? <laughs> and these are good things. These can be wonderful things. We shift in and out of these brainwave states all the time. But when you're listening to somebody teach, you want to be a Berean. You want to be listening to everything that they say and scrutinizing it. Um, now, um, this can make believers, uh, other people, become judgmental in the group. Some groups actually have hot seats, and they'll sit somebody down and have sessions where they're supposed to confess things. But this is a very strong psychological process, very powerful. And you also feel that you get this purging. You know, you talk about what you did wrong. There's a, just an emotional purging just getting to talk about it. Activities seem to be spontaneous and uh, situations are manipulated to seem spontaneous and divine. And um, I believe complementarian does, complementarianism does this quite well. You go into a meeting, say you go to Southern Seminary and you sit there and you have all the greats walk out on the platform and you look around and there's thousands of awestruck students just hanging on every word and it's this ecstatic experience. And of course, if they believe it, it must be true. And all of this is seen as the, the acceptance from the crowd and the excitement um, creates the idea that this is divine information. It couldn't, it, it, peop, not everybody would believe it if it wasn't true. So it has to be true. It has to be out of the mouth of God. And it creates this mystical aura. Um, I know a lot of people, a friend of mine says, a lot of these men have timely tears, so they use emotion to convey the message. Are they really crying? Are they really moved emotionally? I don't know. Um, and then we have social proof. It's when it's accepted. It's hard to resist this. It's a very powerful thing. But you're not allowed to question. So when your uh, own natural thinking kicks in because nobody's got all the answers for every situation. God wants us to use discernment and think and make choices. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. We have to choose every day. We have to look at those weapons of influence every day.